Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 42. I am Ryan, the GM. It is the 8th of April, 2020. Here are the players. Hi, I'm Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, a half of Druid. And I go. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's you. Uh, Sean, uh, I'm playing Bastille, Warforged uh, Forge Cleric. Hey guys, I am Crumbar. I am playing a uh, half orc paladin. And you are Scott. Oh yeah, so I am. Thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. <laughs> this real life counts as well. Yeah, and I'm Stuart in real life. I play Reach, a half elf monk. <laughs> in my other real life. <laughs> right. I what do you that's remember? A, that's such a thing that exists. Yeah, I know, right? Apparently, um, it's a very small map. Yeah. <laughs> It's. I mean, it's not. Um, it's not one to one. Um, yeah. So, what do you remember from last time? We found some mad floaty guy who made us smell things, and I interrogated. It, tried to interrogate him, which didn't really work. And <laughs> he stole my song. You gave it up. Yep. You didn't steal it. He stole it. <laughs> it's crumb bar logic. What did you expect? But what? the good thing was that he was the like head of the the. Stuff the Arcane there, Anvil, the really, really, really unique one. named magic school in the city of Anvil. The Arcane Anvil. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ryan stayed up all night thinking of that. Honestly, one. I thought about <laughs> changing it afterwards, and I thought, no, it's. I mean, it's exactly what it says in the tin, and it was named by dwarves, so I feel like it works. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dying oh, a little wee bit. bit of COVID um, there, right? That will bet me. Yeah, it's not good. Um. No, I'm like, yeah. Excellent. Uh, Thanks for that. I like, <laughs> what uh, else yeah. happened? Um, basically, he's going to try and help us out because it's like, yeah, this guy's probably got more pull than, you know, Lord Deep Random. So drink a lot. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what I was even calling him last week. Not Lord Deep Man, which was his name. Uh, yeah. yeah. When do, when do I call people <laughs> by their real names in the tribe? Ever? Uh, there was an arc, and it was that arc up north, and it had like all the orcs in it, and you used everybody's name. It was great. I remember those times. Yeah. Yeah. But now everyone's back to just being Zadreka. Yeah, everybody's a Zadreka now. Brilliant. All those well-named NPCs. Uh, right. Yeah. I has he missed anything, guys? I think that's pre he did pretty much cover the the major points. Um, so, yeah. I can't actually remember where exactly it was that we finished, though. Or is, We're getting uh, all our stuff ready before he teleports us, hopefully. Huh. <laughs> Teleport. Oh, did, God. Don't his, his words were like, come back here when you are ready to depart, and then I'll be here. Yes. Pretty much, yeah. right? That's what I'm saying, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so it's basically wrap up your affairs in town, essentially, and he'll vouch for you to get to, like forge and ideally an audience with the king, right? So yeah, anything else that has been missed? I think that was everything. Yeah, all good. That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah I think I think so too. I uh, right, we'll review goals then very quickly because we've done a lot of that offline. So goal one: get word to GDW about Gil. Then we've got to figure out how to close hell holes as a team safely. We have get to forge safely. We've got a lot of safelies really make these really difficult goals. Uh, get the dwarves to help the citadel and depart for the frost ranges. Uh, are we changing any of those? Yes, we can rid of the words safely from them all. <laughs> 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 we don't care. Safely. Yeah, I mean, I suppose breathing is good enough, right? Um, yeah. For those who breathe, I guess. Um, I like to breathe. Yeah. I'm sure many people do. So yeah, now I think we're good with goals for now. Uh, uh, actually, I don't. I don't like to breathe. Oh, okay. And you'll find out soon. <laughs> Guessing we are drunk, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, right. So I think we. The game opens up in a. What looks like a kind of dark library, right? And the camera's quite high up in the corner looking down through like a bunch of stacks of books and there's somebody sat at like a big kind of wooden bench with a, a big pile of books and some like burnt down low candles and mm. um, there is a 
like a man, kind of like pacing up and down. Uh, you guys recognize him as uh, Zoradak that you met last session. Um, he's pacing up and down. Uh, we can't hear what's being said, but there's a lot of um, excited hand gestures. Um, is this in his shop? Sorry, or is... nope. It's exactly where I described it. Um, where is that? in a dark library? Oh, right, and, just uh, dark library. Yep. Okay. And uh, it's one of those things where you can't quite see further because they didn't pay for more of the set, so we can only see the bookshelves that are lit by this little candle, <laughs> and yeah, everything you, you else is dark. To, you need to download the DLC. Great screen. Yep, we we need uh, that highest level Patreon to come in, quite frankly, <laughs> before we can afford such things as like an actual set <laughs> and maps that make sense. Um, so we have that little brief shot, and then um, Ordak leaves the like the screen and it fades out. And then we fade in on wherever the hell you guys actually are. Um, so where did you go after you left him? Or is it like the next day? Or like what did you need to do to get ready for this? You tell me. Does the pub oh, count? Just get our horses. Really, is it not? Well, you've paid yeah, for that, you paid for one more night in Anvil. So if there was stuff he's wanted to do here, he's have like a day. You can do stuff in. But yeah, like he's you could just say right, cool, bye, guys. Um, if you don't turn up for your horses, they'll just probably be sold on. So, yeah, you can could sell. This? Yeah, can we just try and sell them? Yeah, you, you'll just get half your money back. Yay! Um, sell horses. We, we might want them. Yeah, we can. Yeah, I mean, why more. don't we take them on the trip? I don't quite understand. Yeah. Can we take them into forge? I presume dwarves have four-legged friends as well. Uh huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. like dwar dwarves travel through the Undermarch with carts and horses and various other stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh right. Okay. If that's an option. Yeah. yeah. If, if that's an option, then yeah, we'll just roll with that. Yeah, you can keep all of them. Yeah, it was again for you to dictate to me what you're doing on your your potential last day in a anvil. What else? What else you're you need to do? <laughs> Quickly pulls together a bar map so you can fight in it. Do um, it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> now, weirdly, there's some magic that restrains all aggressive tendencies in you, Crumbar, and it's called Ryan. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what is it you want to do? Uh, is there anything like besides get your horses and your shit together from the, the hotel? Um, can I purchase some bottles of wine? Do you have any money left? <laughs> I got stacks, bro. I Might got be a better stacks. idea getting loads of water, but we are probably okay because we're going to say so. We should oh, no, okay. that's what I'm thinking as well. Uh, right, well, how many things do I have? What is it? The is it just water bag or water, water bag? skins? Water yeah. skin. I have a uh, few in the the games master's going to be now quite particular about our water usage. Yeah, because I have I don't have any water skins. <laughs> yeah, so, not me. It's because you had a magic jug. That's what you used to have. So I shall. Get if everybody's it looking at a uh, roll twenty, so Anvil is that place, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pointing to here, mm -hmm. and then the under oh, march God, is all the way over. Like it's basically there, up to there. So that's like a hundred miles of twisty, turny, dangerous, underdark cavern bullshit. Just so you know. So Stu's not exactly wrong unless you want to start drinking like undermarch water. Right. Yeah. Let me. I need to buy water and I need to buy wine. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Um, how much how water much and wine are you buying? How much are the water skins and how much long do they last? I mean. They're like, what, half a gallon or something like that? I can't remember. They're very, like, not... They wouldn't last a day, I think. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, I would say so long as you've got one for every day, you expect to be thirsty. Yeah, which is every single day. Okay, so um, I shall buy five water skins yeah. and two bottles of wine. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Two silver for the water skins, if you... That's all right, yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. What is it? Two silver each for water skin. Uh, so ten silver, so I need to break... And we'll, as, much, we'll assume they come much? full, right? 
as well. How, yeah. <laughs> how much silver is in a gold again? Is it just ten? Ten. ten. It's factors of ten, buddies. Yep. To make it easy, you can tap your gold coin and make it into a bunch of silver coins if you want. Right. Okay. So I'll just spend a spend a gold. Um, I cannot find a water skin. Oh, wait, it's one word. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, less is more is, they say. And less uh, is water. I... And more is and more. How much is wine, Ryan? I'll go to that wee lassie at the bar. What, you want that really expensive wine? No, just crumb <laughs> bar wine. Crumb bar um, wine. I, I, I can't actually find wine in the compendium either. Yeah, it's it's a you different find? it's a different thing. It's because it's like a service. So it's like food and drink and lodgings. Um drink. So like wine for common wine, a pitcher of common wine it's two silver. Uh two silver, so I will buy two jugs of wine, so that will give me that too. And it was ten gold for a fine bottle of wine, as you remember from last time, which is one platinum. Oh, ten gold? Yeah, one platinum per fine bottle of wine. I'm so tempted to just buy two fine bottles of wine. <laughs> uh, nah, I'll just go with a, with a normal. Hmm. And that would take me down to two silver. Okay, okay. Um, Is it a else, like, stocking up on the, uh, the underground booze crawl, apparently? Um... Mm -hmm. Wait. Yes, I don't even think five's enough, but seeing yeah, five isn't enough. That's why I've got more in the form of wine. Yeah, because see, to be honest, am I reading this right? You might actually have two water skins per day. Yeah, but like you could, Are you? you could risk having one a day though. Yeah, that's what you I mean. Like roll a component save for yep. exhaustion. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But that's all like. Oh, so thirst is the same as exhaustion then? Yeah. It, well, I mean, thirst, thirst can least lead to exhaustion, right? Because okay. obviously, if you're physically getting worn out from the resources you need to function. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's However, a. I'm hmm? quite sure that I have like among my spells that I have stuff that creates water, and yeah, I've got create or destroy water. And I've got good berry. So, so technically, I have us covered for food and water. So long as he keeps those jugs, yeah. Because you don't get you don't get containers with your spell. I mean, <laughs> worst, worst case scenario, we could just drink some healing potions, right? I mean, that would be a waste. No. Also, yeah, no, because no, they're not water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're not water, but surely they hydrate you in some way, shape, or form, right? No, uh, they don't. They ma they magically dry you out. It's like drinking salt. I could get a barrel of water on my horse. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah. Oh, do that. Yeah, that sounds good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, no I like things that. Can, can you get a barrel of mead on it as well? <laughs> Yes. Well, that's your horse, I think, yeah. by the way. But yeah, so, these are just like, why don't you just sell all the horses by a goddamn cart, then? Yeah. Honestly. It seems like it's really? going that way. No, because you might want... Remember, you're going to need to like feed and water your horses. So, keep that in mind. And you're going to make the horses work every day, so it's going to be like two water skins, minimum of water per horse, blah blah blah. All this fun admin Ooh, bullshit, yep. That. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Just if you are wanting to actually keep horses, horses alive. Are always them, keeping them. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, words. In that case, do we want to keep the horses or? Keep in mind, Goodbury would still apply as well, with based on your logic there, are you? Because mm. you make one. I mean, I've got. You make ten with Goodbury, so yeah, as long as you're not exceeding ten people. I'm going to just quickly spend, I must spend another gold just to be sure, just so I can get another five water skins then. By the way, I cannot see the price of a barrel of water. It's all got ale, wine, and other stuff in it. I well, mean, I would say it's probably more like ten gold, right? Like, maybe maybe even like five gold. I'm not too fussed about that, to Run be honest. Fire. It's cheap ale's three gold. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, it's 40 gallons of liquid, right? And what's a gallon of ale? Yummy. Right, so a gallon of ale is what? 
actually, well, two silver, two, four, four silver. Is it for a gallon of ale? Water so, for, is cheaper. so for a gallon of ale, it's two silver. The yeah, water's more expensive. Uh, for the ale, yeah. But for a, what do you call it? For a barrel, full stop, it holds forty gallons of liquid. So I would just say the barrel costs whatever. Thing it up. So what was it? A water skin was two, two silver as well, right? Two silver. So four silver for and forty gallons. Hundred and sixty silver. Uh, sixteen gold. Jesus. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're getting a free barrel with that. That could be that could be like a boat. That could be you know a fetching hat that doesn't fit. It could be a suit of makeshift armor. You know, it could be somewhere to just. It could be target practice. Like there's so many uses. Once. Could be my drum tank. Could be in. Could be a drum. Mhm. Mm mm. Could start a wee band. I should. I I'll find it. But well, okay. Mhm. <laughs> Uh, is MDL doing anything admin-y in terms of their inventory for in here? Like, I'm assuming they're taking uh, horses. Really, so... I, really, I don't have anything else to admin. Okay, and we can retroactive anything Kitty would have bought uh, since she would have had this moment to do that too. Which is fine by me. Everybody good on that then, or still got more? Started. Yeah, I seems to all be okay now. Good, okay. Plus, these are all still doing okay for money. Alright, cool. Uh, you cost way nothing because you're on the horse. Uh, cool. Yep, yep. <laughs> on the horse. As I said, if it helps on your inventories, feel free to write horse as an item on your inventory and just put everything on the horse beneath it. Because um, <laughs> that works just as well, you know. Because you can like move stuff up and down the order of your inventory. Which is nice. Can we move up? Stuff up and down a horse. I mean, yeah, based on if you're just... caught in public, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, right. Anything else before we move on from the shopping adventure? Mm, can't see. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, yeah. So, do you take the day, or do you just head back later that day? We're just heading back, see what it says, unless anybody's got any other ideas. I've not got anything else to do. Are you? Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do, to be honest, just go. So it's like kind of lead these horses through the streets back to the magic shop, essentially? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you just get back there. The shops, obviously, the doors open, the beads are in the doorway. I... I assume you all head in. Is somebody like he's bringing your horses in with you, or are you uh, leaving them outside, tying them up somewhere? Yeah, um, I'm no, assuming though. Leaving them, of course. Hey, wait, or, first or of worst all, case scenario, I could stay outside and like hold on to all the rail <laughs> reins. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. Is the, first of all, is there a place that we can tie them off? Yeah, easily. You can just tie me like a beam of a store or something. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll just tie them off then, and I'll go inside. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to go like Western town in a cave thematic on this, yeah. Um, but yeah, so who heads in first? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll... <laughs> Such bravery. <laughs> Facing yeah, down the I'll... demon armies of hell. Yep. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, take a wee stomp in. You all jumped in into the abyss. Wearing nothing but like a necklace and some hope. Um, uh, uh, and a was giant ass hammer. Hammer. Was hope, was oh, you dear. are still salty about that hammer, aren't you? A little bit. <laughs> little tiny bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, had, I'll just kind of. You head in first, yeah? Yep. Head in. Uh, so you walk in up. and mm -hmm. you. Instead of seeing like the store. With all the kind of the shelves with all the random bottles and stuff at the sides, and you walk through the beads, and you get hit with that same scent of the the cooked meat from your first hunt. Um, mm -hmm. You see that the store actually leads off into like a big corridor. Is it 
is there any doors or that, or is it just literally? Uh, no, just a big long okay. corridor. It kind of goes off into like the kind of you know dark a we can't afford to build the whole set distance. Um, is it dark? As the dude. The... Sorry, my connection's up and down. Did you see? Is the dude there? Right. Yeah. 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 So Jeff Bridges turns up looking for his rug, and uh, he tries to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the Oradak isn't there. Uh, no. Nope. Before we carry on, I recommend we just grab the horses and go down this corridor. Uh. Is the corridor wide enough for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, grab the horses and just start heading down this corridor. Then can we see the end of it? No. Nope. Yeah, yep, the shop's yep. disappeared, hasn't it? It's now just a corridor, mm. in it? So it's, no, because Arya's still outside waiting on you to inform her. <laughs> right. Right. Jump outside, or not jump outside, but um, casually step outside. <laughs> casually step outside. Uh, Forward uh, roll outside. <laughs> and so look to the judges to see what score I got. Um, <laughs> just step outside, and I just say, um, "The shop has disappeared. There's only a long corridor." I mean, the shop's still there. It's just the back oh. end of the shop goes into a big corridor now. It didn't before. So it yeah. is, the shop is still there. Yeah, but you know what I mean. There's now a giant corridor where we would expect the back of a shop to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, we best be. Um, I reckon. <laughs> sorry, Ryan. You've rolled acrobatics. For um, you, yeah. Um, Not bad for you, actually. That. Yeah, really is. <laughs> um, anyway. Voices in my head. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> I let said uh, just take the horses and go down the corridor. That looked pretty far. Yeah. Uh, Arya, you had done with them. You got any comments to make about anything? I guess. No. Cr Crumbar's amazing leadership skills, for example. If a Crumbar's horse to finish it, <laughs> then he's going. Probably just like shaking my head. What are you doing with Ruya? Remember, she's or like Ruya's been quite unsettled. She's on my shoulder. Remember, I told she's you that she's been quite maybe? unsettled throughout the whole period because she doesn't like being underground. I know. Me neither. I don't mm -hmm. like it either. So I'll probably be like fussing her every so often, kind of like reassuring her. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Like we don't really have people here that I could have left her with. Very and true. I don't want to leave her. In a city. And your so plan isn't specifically to come back here for a while, let's face it. So, exactly, that too. If at all, Somewhere. right? So, like it depends on how the, the frost range journey goes, doesn't it? So, Rears are only f a flighted companion, uh, and we're going to fight a dragon, so it might be handy. <laughs> this might be yeah, a suicide yeah. I love the idea that. <laughs> Can you give Ruya the pep talk in character reach? Because I can't wait to see that. Where it's like, now Ruya, I know you're just a hawk. However, but... we're up against a dragon, and only you can fly. <laughs> so, tap, you're in, and then we'll be here when you need to tap out. <laughs> we believe in you. I think it's more of a case of like, Ruya would be helpful in kind of like a little scout yeah but that's it the dragon went that way I've seen the smoke and the fire and <laughs> <laughs> the destruction and <laughs> going off in the horizon <laughs> hopefully not to horizon at least yeah, yeah. especially if um what you yeah, were talking about like horizon to where we want. i mean uh, well. yeah right it'd be a lot closer than where it would have yeah. been yeah he might just be able to teleport exactly where we want. <laughs> it's like, yeah, nope. <laughs> Deflect it. Um, yeah, so off to <laughs> this corridor. You all head in slowly, and yeah, like as you start walking down the corridor, there's not really any discernible features beyond stonework and like a kind of wooden floor, like a kind of really deep wooden floor, like deep red. And a. Uh, you just walk for a bit, the floorboards creak under, obviously the weight of like the horses with barrels and shit strapped to them. And uh, you realise that the corridor is lit, but there's no torches or like over like head kind of hanging like candelabra shit 
whatever that official name is for that thing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you need to walk obviously to the part where it's not so much that the shop ceases to exist, but it just goes beyond your vision, right? Uh, nothing's in black and white from what you can tell either, so it's not dark. So, mm -hmm. place is just lit from some unknown source. Um, you walk a bit further on, and uh, there's two big double wooden doors at the far side. Maybe still like a good exact movement away <laughs> from you guys just now. I right. will knock on the door. Yeah. You uh, know how to knock? Wow. It does. Yeah. It's just usually he uses his hammer. That's all. Um, yeah. But yeah. And, and he usually knocks hard enough that it uh, breaks. Right. But yeah, you. Yeah, but I think maybe it's like this door is made by dwarves, so I ain't gonna risk yeah. that. I love like the kind of like marble door in the flawless golden city you smacked with your hammer, but this wooden door in a stone corridor. You're like, nah, dwarves, man, don't fuck with them. <laughs> uh... Quickly, write a backstory. Backstory where dwarves <laughs> did something to me and it made me fear dwarves. No. I mean, we did we did speak about this like last time when we got to Anvil, and we did talk about how you probably haven't had much interaction with dwarves. Um, I know. Beyond those at the Citadel, obviously, um, and maybe anyone any of the dwarves that were in like raids when you were younger, obviously, in terms of like mm -hmm. places you raided. But um, put axes to their faces and whatnot. Yeah. Right. Uh, turns out that fond smell of cooking meat was dwarven meat or some shit, right? Like. Yeah. yeah horrible yeah. crumbar. Horrible orc crumbler. I'm um, amazing. <laughs> and yeah, so you, you get up to the door and you like go up to it, maybe do that awkward look to everybody else in the group and then just knock on the door and the door just does that thing where they both swing open and you can see a familiar looking library in the sense of from the cutscene at the start of the episode and realising you've been in a few libraries in your time. And yeah, you just walk in and there's like a kind of big kind of cloaked figure sitting hunched over a table with a big pile of books and Ordak is standing there I, and he kind of like notices you um, as you walk in and he, he starts to wave you in he's like please come in uh, we have our horses with us and he kind of like he tilts his head to kind of like look past Crumbar and then obviously can he sees him he's like so you do how handy. Good. And then he, then he kind of just looks <laughs> at you and then he, he like puts his hand through his beard and he, and still motions with the same hands like to come through as his beard gets tangled in his fingers. Uh, okay, later, of course. Yep, walk, walk on through. And then like as you like slowly like lead them all into the library doors, uh, the doors like shut behind you and he says, just make sure they don't chew on the books. Though there are some irrepla irreplaceable books in this collection, I can just see Kitty trying to steal all the books. Luckily, through narrative excuse, she's not though, which is handy. <laughs> um, Imagine that. Yeah, so convenient. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he, uh, he clasps his hand and like taps his nails together. I. Uh, and he says, are you ready to depart Anvil? Ready any time now, yeah. He says, mm -hmm. and I see you've made travel preparations, which is good. I was concerned as to your safety journeying through the Undermarch. I would normally offer further assistance however my duties here in the arcane anvil any kind of motions to like the vague library space you're in um, prohibit me from unwarranted trips I will uh, what? and he, yeah he stops and he, he turns to you and mm. raises an eyebrow a big bushy white what, eyebrow what danger will we expect if that you seek an audience with the Dwarf King and you do not know the dangers of the Undermarch? 
Nope. First time here. I see. Do you want a real history for me, though, Crumbar? We'll see actually if you do know anything about it. Oh, just right. like just anything that might have come up to you, like in passing. This is where you've just been made out to be a liar when you crit this. Twenty. <laughs> oh, I did totally Ooh. die. To be fair, you, you did crit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, crit. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah, you don't. I right. don't know anything about it. Right. What do you think's oh. in the undermarch? I mean, this as a question to Scott. Scott, I'm going to say, like, you know the uh, the big worm from June? Mm -hmm, yeah. That. Yeah, cool. Then I guess Crumbar believes that's also what lives in the Undermarch. Yeah, I'm just like, what lives underground? Either that or a big giant mole or... Um... Hundreds of dwarfs that like to mine. <laughs> but that would be another option, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Details. Possibly a scaling to... Yep, there may or may not be a skeleton or two. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm like, Crumbar's just like, not real, like, that kind of. He's more just asking, kind of. I like the idea that you do start rambling, though, going, no, I don't, I don't know. If it's my first time here. And they go, maybe a big worm. And then, like, everything goes to move the conversation. And you go, maybe a, a big mole. And you just kind of keep and saying then, things into the. What, 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 I, what I would love is, is if then folk realise it's like, wait. He's not asking what we should be worried about. He's asking what he's going to be able to fight down here. Yeah, pretty much, right? Because that's like, oh, I've never fought a giant worm before. Yeah, because that's the crumbar way, right? What can I yeah. fight? Let me just put a wee line in there so we've got some idea of. But I mean, there's um, like uh, I have. Why do I have a feeling you're going to hit out with some mas magic voodoo nonsense? Like, what do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know, like there'll be some magic force of them. And then a uh, Ardak just looks at you and he says It is good that you are well armed. I shall say that. I I try and keep myself brief in my travels between the Undermarch and the Landforge. And he kinda of just like nods as if like thinking about something kind of off in the distance. And he says, I have a companion for your travels, ideally to safeguard the journey and to navigate between Anvil and Forge. The Undermarch has many options available and you shouldn't choose them all. And he kind of just like weirdly laughs to himself at that. And then uh, he still slowly like untangles what, his beard like, from his fingers. <laughs> what like pathing options? Like, well, would you ask him? Because that seems like a question you're asking me as a GM. <laughs> so does Crumber mm. ask him anything about that, yeah. or is yeah? Uh... I just say it's like so the undermarch is just a straight line. Then it is a a maze with no direction. There was no purpose behind it beyond vast tunnel network. Why ever did you settle here then? A compass might have been a good idea about it. But, um... It is more about the integrity of the surroundings. One of the most safest passages may collapse on itself one day and you may have to find a new route to your destination. Mm, sounds dangerous. It is incredibly dangerous and if the dwarves ever safeguarded it, it would become easier for others to control. With the danger inherent, it keeps the passages somewhat vacant to most. Mm. And he kind One of like thing slowly of, nods yeah. like at that and he's like, there is some method to a dwarven mind. And he kind of giggles mm -hmm. to himself at that. Speaking of dwarfs, have you made note to the king of, that we are coming? Yeah. He smiles. Yes, I was getting to that. I, And then like, 
All right, there you go on. He kind of like goes to the table and he rolls up a scroll that's on the table in front of this again cloaked figure. Rolls it up, presses his finger against it again, and like the magical kind of like wax seal appears all over it. And he says, "This is your introduction letter. It will get you past the guards at the gates of Forge, and it will also, with hope and the right conditions, get you in front of the king." However, getting you in front of the king is not a guarantee, for I do not control his desires. And he kind of waves like vaguely in the air with the scroll. This is as best as I can offer, and on a good day you will see the king. And he hands uh, the scroll out to, I guess, whoever is willing to take it. I mean, I'm busy mining the horses and making uh, sure they don't try to eat anything. Yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say, I'm, I'll probably take it since I've been interacting with him. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. And uh, Reach seems weirdly dumbstruck by the the room and it's all. It seems. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you can take the scroll, add it to your inventory, which is like a, I guess, intro, letter, maybe is the best thing to label it as. And you can label it from Oradak if you wish. You got that? Well, put it in my inventory, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You'll need it. <laughs> yeah. Let. No, no, no. It could just be a letter from Oradak if you wanted to label it that way. Letter from the man. <laughs> Go. God, that's so vague in this game. Uh, um, but yeah, I uh, says yes. As for my my colleague and the emotions to the figure at the uh, at the table, uh, do you stand up at this point, or do you stay sitting, or like what happens? That's for you. At uh, me? Yeah. Because it's you, buddy. Okay, so you see a kind of. A, a pile of carved stone and worked metal and cloth. Um, he sort of, uh, Bastille cranes his neck towards you and he says, My, my, my. Aren't you all looking strong? Yes, this will work nicely. Exactly as Celeste described. And he starts scanning and craning his neck and checking out their pupils and generally examining that. Yeah, like kind of gauging their reactions. Mm -hmm. You see Arya immediately turn her head, because she probably may have been turned around a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, minding the horses, like she immediately kind of like almost gives herself wet blash by just turning herself to look. <laughs> yeah, and I think that what I want to highlight here is let's have the shot where obviously Bastia like kind of stands up and obviously like takes in every day. Um, after seeing that, and then the camera flicks around, no longer looking at Bastille, but looking at what Bastille is looking at, which is you guys. Describe yourselves so that he knows what your characters look like now. Go for it, Arya. You're up first. Hmm. So, Arya is quite obviously the sort of person that does not really care about what people think of how she looks. She probably has like little patches on her clothing that might be a little muddy and she doesn't really care about looking her best. She feels because she feels best in nature, so she doesn't really give a shit. Um she has her hawk on her shoulder and every so often she'll be like uh fussing it because it's it's been quite uh, quite stressed and kinda like, you know, reassuring it. Mm -hmm. And um she's quite um she kind of seems a bit lost in her world because she doesn't really like she gets overwhelmed by cities so you see her kind of like anxiety spacing out sort of thing because you're in a city right now but she's gonna be a lot more calm whenever we're like mm. somewhere outdoors wild nature not in combat <laughs> etc uh, mm -hmm. a massive bow uh, and um and, and arrows on her her shoulder Mm. And uh, yeah, that definitely the sort of person they can sort out for dinner. Basically. What I'll do is if I've got everybody's art here, which I should do, I'll share it in the general chat as well as we go through the descriptions. 
uh, ah. when it decides to load uh, for the most part. But, uh, do you want to go next, Crumbar? Uh, so Crumbar is a big boy. Um, oh, sorry, let's pause you there. Arya is also wearing a like half plate oh, yeah. thing, a, a bright gold half plate. She's a bit weird like that. Yeah, she's an Definitely odd... not your mm. typical druid. The reason she's wearing that is because it was an armor upgrade huh. from the like the Golden Order, but that's Okay, I yeah. see. I, I look like yeah. I'm from the Golden Order, but I'm I'm I've just stolen their clothing okay. with their permit. <laughs> yeah. She kinda of, it's like pseudo deputized. Um Yeah. Crumbar decided you get this, you get mm. this, you get this. And you get a gold <laughs> thing and you get it's, a gold thing. It's kind of like when you have that one friend that has a band, and then he just gives that random merch to everybody to like yeah. get everybody to <laughs> yeah. to be a walking talking advert for him. So, kind of like yeah. that. Have these coasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it, Scott. Um. Yeah. So basically, Crumbar is a big boy. He is a bit. He's six foot two. Uh, quite heavy built, pale green skin, dark purple hair. He, he's a bit on the older side at 37. Um, yeah, so looking at him, you'll see him just came clad in golden order armor, mm -hmm. uh, like plate mail, because I'm a baller. Um, <laughs> like, you'd, you'd probably notice that um I'm I'm clearly war torn as well. Like there are noticeable scars and slashes and whatnot all over me. Um well, well the bits of me that you can see. Um and there is a axe on my back that appears to almost look like it's liquid, but but which gives the impression of Okay. I see. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a great axe, not just a normal axe. <laughs> it is a great axe, yeah. Two-handed bad boy. Yeah. yeah. It's a big, like, kind of no, like just black and red, just, liquidy yeah. horror, quite frankly. Yeah, I just didn't want you thinking that I've just got this wee hatchet, like, hey <laughs> What was is that he, game? Prototype? Like... Yeah, Prototype. If you ever remember oh, that game. God. Yes! It's probably see, made yes. from a Prototype. Um, it's not oh. a million miles away from that, quite frankly. But yeah, oh. uh, I, th I think as you're looking at him right now, um, he'd just be happy. How the fuck do you know who Celeste is? Look at my face. Don't worry. Is he, has he got a big ego? Is he is he like um, full of himself? Mm, he's an orc. You wouldn't admit it, but yes, he does. <laughs> 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 okay, because Bastille is exactly the same height and he's also wearing full plate now. Mm -hmm. No, no, you're not wearing plate mail. You are plate mail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's true, quite I'm frankly. A, I'm a lot simpler dressed. Uh, yep, very simple great. robes. Uh, yellowy. Yeah, yellow in colour. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, bald. Uh, uh, Bad pack, though, and no weapons. Oh, got bracers on. Uh, yeah, big gold bracers as well. Mm. Oh yes, yeah. I heard about these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's yeah, that's about the only thing unusual. That's. Uh... What I'm gonna do are yes. I'm just gonna delete that middle picture and also the axe yeah. picture because we all know about prototypes now. Um, and it lets the oh, the characters all be. Side scroller. What was the middle picture? That was just um, Arya was explaining something for me. I also oh, right. I've got here. I'll share Eric as well because he is in our list. I'll pop him in as well. I, and then I'll share. Bastiel in a second once this decides to load Eric because it's taking its sweet ass time. But yeah, finish. Um, anything else that you are carrying or like as like trademark about you guys, feel free to share as well. But I think he's pretty much covered it, right? Because your bracers were pretty much trademark on you, Reach. You've got um, mm -hmm. yeah. the axe is pretty much crumbar with the golden armor. Um, I think the only other thing is my pendant, which is kind of my channel for magic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I would say that's probably not ter like terribly visible all the time, though, right? I and 
That's not an accurate description, there, Eric. I know there's too much, too much clothes on, yeah. Uh, Jason, mind sculptor. Yeah, like Very it's nice. primarily because he's a human yeah, noble. Yeah, but chance going to recognise it. Yep. <laughs> that's okay. We discovered a lot of overlap in our uh, knowledge pools. So good. So good. So yeah, like there's a, a nice visual at least for everyone. Um, as I said, we've got. Mm-hmm. Like two half elves, um, Kitlith. I'll describe for you because um, she's not here just now. But she is a wood elf, <laughs> a, a wood elf rogue, who has so many things on her. It oh, is God. hard to make her out because she is at capacity for carrying. Her horse is taking some of the load probably as well, and okay. most of the stuff she has equipment-wise, not her main outfit, but most of her stuff is gold. So she's not subtle. Shiny kitty. The, the, oh, uh, the bloody infantry train the Falklands with their backpacks, that's what she was <laughs> mm. Yeah, you're not kidding, to be honest. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's her. Uh, she's a wood elf. Uh, as I said, mm. uh, Eric could have been a human. Uh, yeah, now she's a wood elf. She, she, she was part cat before. Um, yeah, yeah so, she just confuses me. So, yeah, you have that revelation in that shot where you all maybe look and regard this figure um, and be like, wait a minute, did they just say the name I think they just name dropped? Um, and then once the, the, the image loads, I'll share the image of uh, Bastille as well. <laughs> and uh, you just kind of have to then imagine a cloak draped over it to hide most of the uh, the image, mostly, quite frankly. Much like how you imagine Eric with less clothes on, imagine. Bastille with more <laughs> clothes on. Um, does everything what a Warforged does? Is everybody what? Oh, right, yeah. Everybody know what oh, a Warforged no, does? Yeah, I had the exact same mission. Nope. Cool. So. He looks like something from Warforged. So, uh, that is a Warframe concept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be why. The, um, <laughs> yep. So, none of you will, in character, likely have ever seen a Warforged before, because none of you have been to the capital from your backstories we've discussed so far. Um, they are very, very rare. Very, very rare. Like, even, sure. like, like by Kitty's standards, rare, right? In terms of <laughs> the fact that she was, like, a one-off sure. in the world as well. Um, yeah, they're not, they're not common, but they're essentially big suits of armour that are sentient really is the gist of it but how much you can tell of that because it may just look like a really big armored dude to you guys right um that's maybe the impression you get initially but obviously he mentions celeste so is there a reaction for md initially about that how close is he he's like maybe there's a big table full of books between the two of you yeah i just can't keep my tongue I'll just keep quiet just now but just stare at him and just trying to like size him up and stuff so do we give Crumber inspiration for like doing stuff out of character or like mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it's more so I don't want to you know challenge this guy when um, not the Drek is in the room mm-hmm. yeah you only know so many people know of who Celeste is anyway which is a Curiosity. Yeah. It's also it's also the fact that I'm like I'm now thinking that this blue guy has lied to me about knowing Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> this right. because, yeah, um what's his name? Lord Bumblebush? Um So do you wanna know the dwarven <laughs> lord's name or the floating guy's name? Floating guy's name. Oradak Dorath. <laughs> Yeah, he's in the he's in the NPC list, Scott. Is why we have one. I can't read fantasy. (laughs) Yes, you can. Um, Your name is Crumbar (laughs) Denebic. You can. Can I just remember? Can can I just remind you that you picked that? To be fair, a random dice roller picked that correctly. (laughs) Um, Crumbar's a great orc. It is. Um, it leads to so many other possibilities. Uh, but, but yeah, so mind when I was asking Ordak if he knew Celeste, and yeah. he was like, I know, I don't know anyone by that. Uh, and it just so happens that magic thing does. I'm like, hmm, 
Yeah. You are lying to me. <laughs> yeah, so if that's like the initial reaction where you guys all do your snapshot reaction staring at Bastiel and then uh, I think Oradak then speaks up and he says I shall leave you to get acquainted however my colleague here knows the way to forge and shall guide you he has my trust and since you ask for my trust also in the document and any gestures to Kitty who has the proof of the, de the demon pudding um, then he kind of like nods and says if you require me I will be nearby and he like picks up a couple of books puts them under his arm and just kind of glides away um, <laughs> that's a cool trick though yeah um, well, why walk when you can just hover right um, um, yeah um yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to walk around the table. And just that kind of, you know, that kind of slow. Here's the thing. What height is um? What height's Bastille? Uh, six one. Okay. About. So six like, one. I'm six two. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. The um. Yeah, I'm wearing shoes. <laughs> oh. He's wearing. <laughs> we, we gave the orc shoes, right? We're not that kind of game. Um, no. The one thing I do want to add in Probably. is a uh, for that. Can you say your last name for his best deal? Just so it's on a recording at some point. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm actually gonna have to look up uh, certain pronunciation things because it's like ancient Norse, but it's it's something like it, so the over oh, the dash on the top is like a ooze. so it's like u siligander. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna to have to look that up properly, but it's mm -hmm. very um, Norse. Don't worry, I don't use my full name either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I mean, Kitty uses her full name. We're here. Yep, because we. Is that you? Is, is it a Tuesday? Are you? Are you this one again? <laughs> Which identity are you? <laughs> Lady Rainwood. Yep. Um. <laughs> uh, I love that. Oh dear. <laughs> Love it, you just got arrested for yeah, like, being a fucking noble. Uh, anyway, yes. Back in the scene <laughs> yeah. that we're meant to be in. Yep. Mm. Oh, so. What, so did Crumbar actually say, uh, how the fuck do you know so like, No, 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 okay. no. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, so. I think the scene kinda, so far is that you've started walking around the table. I think so far. Yeah, so that kind of hand on the table, kind of following the trim of it, <laughs> and kind of keeping, keeping an eye locked on you. And then get like right up in your personal space and be like, Celeste said that we, you say we look as strong as Celeste said. said. Can I try that again for well, Scott? Because I lost I, a lot of that. I, I'll just, uh, sorry, I wasn't that anyway. Um, I'll just start again. Because you say we look as strong as Celeste said. Well, if you don't tell us how you know Celeste, you'll find out. And just. Uh, uh, Scary eye trying to stare you down. Um, Bastille stands up and he goes, I think I, I, I like the idea that as you stand up, I'm like, Oh, wait, he's nearly the same height as me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just going up towards the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he goes, uh, You would doubt her. And I cast resistance on myself, channeling Celeste's magic. And you see in the same color and glow uh, as the magic she uses, or kind of arcane traces. Um, my body's kind of fortified with threads of descriptions. Mm. Oh, in, no, I can't. I'd love to read you. <laughs> no, I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kind of look come up and down again what <laughs> are you uh, classic I look at him up. a bit rude and I'm like I, I look a bit at him and I'm like god that's rude well I don't know what the hell that blue guy you know um, fumble bush was fuck I'm gonna call or him that all the time uh, Oriac was Oradak Oradak 
<laughs> I was thinking I'm going to Blake 7 now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm just like, right, what are the chances of me bumping into two things that I don't know? So there's maybe too um, big a group for that reference to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, oh, so yeah, he's not blue. Uh, he had blue robes. That is it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh dear. It wasn't um, just some three people from a Hollywood block, uh, uh, blockbuster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. But shocked about this. <laughs> oh. I'm happy for see how this goes anyway. Yeah. Mm. Uh, happy for a guide through this. Uh, 100 mile maze on In our fact, own would be quick. Uh, right. See, see, because we're. we're okay. See, because yeah, in fact, no, no, let's see, let's see what he goes with. I've already said it, so we'll see what he says. He kind of pounds his chest with one fist and he goes, Dwarven maid, we don't sleep, we don't eat, we don't. Uh, you might know us for our doors. And he leaves it there. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. Uh, <laughs> You can see why I thought he'd fit in, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like, and you can uh, see why I thought mm -hmm. he would fit. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> you can see why I thought oh, I you'd fit in. Credit there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I'm just all up. open their legs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and also Stu. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, back in the, uh, back yeah, in the game. I've, okay. I've not drank enough beer for this shit. Um, I was just kind of, after he says that dwarven maid kind of thing, I would just be like, not confusion, but a bit more curiosity. Look on my head, and I'll just like kind of like knock on his head and just be like, so there's no one in there, huh? Um, he's gonna, he's actually gonna yell out, I was gonna say. Come on, Crumbar! You're better than this! <laughs> um, yeah, you know. You to hit me. Swing <laughs> <for> me. <laughs> You'll mm. learn that it uh, reaches much like a tree in a summer's yeah. day, casting so much shade. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do me a favour, Shan? Can you roll into intimidation? Oh! Yes. Just I to judge shit. what my action would be, it's just, I, I, I want to know what. Okay. Actually, there's a tradition you've had with all of our members, anyway. Mm. At least all of our male uh, members. <laughs> well, I've got my point in it. Shit. That's but, the first one. Yeah, that's the first yeah, one. Yeah, that's fine. I was going to take that. Anyway. Do you want to do a. Uh, um, I, I, I want you to do like a wisdom yeah. save then against it, Crumber. A wisdom <laughs> save. Wisdom. Well, just I'll let you then Love roll play it. off the back of that. There you go. So role play off the back of wow. the ten versus twenty-three. <laughs> right. So I've seen him basically call me out. That's right. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I like the idea that I've like kind of like knocked on your head and you've just kind of like jumped back a bit, and just being like, "Come on, you're better than that." And I was like, "Hmm," and like nonchalantly just axe off the back and spring for the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a great <laughs> ritual of so, passing for you. Does he though? Because you you're technically not yeah. holding your shield. He still does. Still he misses. Twenty-one it. without my shield. Cool. Oh. Yeah. Wait, sorry. What's your AC? Twenty-three <laughs> with a shield. Twenty-one right now. Okay, so twenty-one right now. Good. I was so fucking good. So I right. So I swing for your head. My mm. axe goes, like my axe connects right yeah. with with yeah. the side of your head, but you just stand there, like as if nothing's happened, and I just go like, so I'm like standing there looking at. I'll you. go home, my I axe, guess, right? Like dong echoes my, around the corridor for about five my, minutes. Yeah, yeah, like there'll probably be this big yeah, radiant boom. <laughs> um, like pro now. proper anime physics, hit, like you know, shockwave. My axe just in the sides of your head, and I just go, hmm. Yep, he's good with me. And then just turn away back to the group. <laughs> I just nod at him, like, fuck yeah, that's the crumb bar I was told about. 
Anyone else? Anyone else want to add anything? To be fair, Cromba, it was okay with me before all that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, considering how uh, uh, um, not not hidden, you know how I mean, recluse, mysterious, how much recluse, uh, uh, yeah, how how mysterious Celeste is, and how we don't really know basically anybody that knows her. The fact that he seems to be sent by her or have some connection to her that's kind of like enough for me even though i'm like because obviously there were quite difficult times earlier when i think we did like i was hoping for a way to contact celeste and um i, I could be like well we did want to contact her we did seek i did seek direction from her i thought she would show up not send somebody but if she sent you then Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> Can you see how I the can't... man isn't blue though? Can you see how he's not blue, Scott? <laughs> Quite the opposite. He's orange and black. Yeah. He does look, he does look blue. Yeah. I guess he definitely I've... looks orange. <laughs> His clothes look blue. He's wearing blue. He's got a Trump tan. <laughs> like, if anything, you could maybe say, like, parts of his hair look blue, but it could be shades of grey, because my eyes don't really perceive mm -hmm. them properly, because chromatic disorders are shit. But yeah. Well, so, Scott, if you look just above what you posted, um, I've already predicted the scene you were having with the mm -hmm. wonderful gif. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but Hulk moves a bit more in than the one below it. <laughs> well, we'll see. There was no retaliation yet, so you don't know. Um, also, when I was going to make that handout for Oradak, the suggested name was Glosh Ibis, and I thought, that's close enough. That's what Crumbar's been calling him, basically. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so Kitty weirdly just accepts that, you know, he's he must know Kitty? Celeste, right? Yeah. Do you mean Aria? No, I mean Kitty, the person I have to roleplay for because she's not here. Right, okay. It might be just another part of her collection. I mean, you probably will be Maybe eventually. She will probably try and steal your spare parts or something. <laughs> um, no, I think he means like if he's part of Celeste's collection, right? I mean, no, I think it's Klepto. Yeah. Order. <laughs> oh, the Klepto, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. I, I thought they'd misread it, sorry. Yeah. So what, what else did um, they see like around you then, well, Bastille, when they I can see your equipment? I think you're a bit too heavy for her to steal outright. Mm. I'll go again. So what did they see around you, equipment-wise? Um, they would see uh, an explorer's kind of uh, messenger bag um, mm. and kind of various ephemera of a, uh, an adventurer and someone who's had to conceal their identity from the public a lot uh, and learn that the hard way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Like so weapons and equipment not... as well? Hmm? Mm. Your weapons and equipment as well. Do you want to describe that to the the group? Oh yeah, you you see these kind of integrated black lensed um, goggles, kind of screwed onto my face. Um, uh, that's about all you would see for now. The rest would be inside the bags. Oh, you uh, know Some of them are a bit big, right? For uh, the bags, your weapons yeah. are probably shield a bit. Hammer. Be your... Yeah. Warhammer shield. Back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Everything. There we go. So I think everything's visually at least accounted for, which is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, I haven't just thrown you the deep end. You do know the way through the Undermarch. Do you have been told <laughs> this? It was part of the reason you sat with a bunch of books to find out the way. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't just me saying, by the way, he knows this. Bye! And fade off into <laughs> NPC vagueness. Um, so yeah, you have been furnished with that, like, you know, knowledge, USB. as it were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if by USB you mean sat there reading. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that will be your guide. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you can pretty much depart whenever you are ready, to be honest. Um, but hope you've got a horse, by the way, or you can jog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're kind of treating your yeah, horses yeah, as pack horses for the moment. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I was going to say that the horses yeah. are 
not usable. I mean, I think Arya can ride her horse, right? Um, but between the rest of these, I mean, I, probably... hope so. I mean, I can speak to them, so I'm quite sure I could get them to not kick me out of the the the, the seat. Mm. So. No, what we're saying I'll, is you I'll can ride it comfortably call... because everybody else has like stored their crap on their horses so much, like a barrel of water and shit like that. And well, I was oh, going to say I'd probably <laughs> comment on the like fifteen tons of liquid you're about to bring through the shithole I know very and <laughs> and offer to carry a lot of it for you. <clears throat> you can carry a barrel. Oh yeah, I can carry two. Believe it. Just bolt them onto your back. <laughs> I mean, he's just a strong boy, that's all. Yeah, it would just take both my arms. Yeah. I'd be absolutely useless. What is your strength to score? That's a very personal uh, uh, game question. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, is that meant? Am I allowed to say? You can say if you want, yeah. You don't have to, though. Uh, don't you need to be a plus one, by the way, to carry two barrels of water? But you wouldn't be able to carry my ship. Plus two. Plus two. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to wear heavy armor without at least 15. Yep. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to be heavy armor without at least 50. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's true. Like, they really should have changed that requirement to constitution for a, you know, a Warforged, shouldn't they have, quite frankly. That's true. There you go, everyone. That's the point. Um, yeah, yeah. Shall we depart? Then? Yep, ready. What direction? Is it carrying on down this corridor, by the way, or is there someone else? I was beginning to think he's got his own me doorway to the Undermar. See, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe you just need to shout an Oridak again. <laughs> Maybe you just don't. Who knows? Um, I don't think... Um, mostly, I think Bastiel has been accompanied by Oridak if he's ever needed something as well, so it's not like it's been super easy to navigate this library inside. It seems to just keep going. And have no particular shape to the room. Hmm. But depends, you can explore for a bit if you want in the library. If you've had a reason to. Nah. <laughs> can I look. Sorry. See the book that we gave Borodak? Mm hmm. Yeah. Can I have a look to see if it's. Do you want to have a look for it just in the immediate location? Yeah, yeah, just... Um, are you going to glance like, around, or are you going to stop and actually look at book titles? Yeah, stop and look at them. We'll investigate then. Um... But we we heard you spell out letter from Oridak at LR. You doing a quick search for books is not going to be a quick... Uh, uh, it's okay, the, di- the dice have sought to it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you find a book you're convinced is the... The book. Oh, so I find it. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, I'll just take note of that for later. Basic, like a mental note for that, and just that kind of. Okay, the book is still here. It's not like in some I don't know hidden realm storage box or something. Cool. For everybody else's player of... knowledge, he has not found it at all. Right. Yeah, I'm, just I want everybody else as a player to know this, just so that there's no confusion later when Scott tries to remind me that I told him where it was. I didn't. Okay. He just uh. thinks he knows where it is. <laughs> uh, and then we're back in the game where Crumbar makes a mental note of where Eremos's book is. Good. I mean, you roll a seven on your investigate check. That's because you rigged my dice. I did not rig your dice, otherwise you would not have passed that wisdom save. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Scott thinks you rigged your dice. That's oh, I see. Right, okay, mm. so my answer to Scott was supposed to somehow be more definitive. Right, okay. <laughs> right, okay. So, yeah, you can, like, head back through the doors behind you, I guess, if you wanted, back through that corridor, back out the shop. Uh, Basto, you know that there is obviously the entrance to the Undermarch is at like the back end of Anvil because it is like the back end of the mountain uh, that you need to go like obviously through. I was about to just say that, Bastille, do you know where we're going now uh, from here? Mm-hmm. Uh, Miles, is this in character? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course, of course. Does my head in. I've been reading non stop. I'll tell you why, not yet. You'd probably run. But uh, we're in it now, guys. Adventure! 
<laughs> Stands yeah. there, backlit by NASA. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're technically concentrating on a spell just now, so you probably are still glowing. <laughs> yeah. Your resistance spell. <laughs> so yeah, do you want to so, just like scene but, change to the entrance to the Undermarch, or if you've got other shit you want to do? No, no other stuff than that. Well, I don't. No, I don't. Yep, right. so I think we, I can think of. we have that shot of just um, adventure, and then it like harsh cuts to just in a in front of a giant stone wall with a bunch of dwarf guards crossing their uh, spears, and we take our break there. Um, and we'll come back at nine, I guess. So say goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.